it's Mariah Lisa with Mariah Shirley Village and I am back today with another black history teaching feature and today we're going to be discussing the Haitian Revolution if you remember from my first video I explained that I would be featuring um, some teaching videos on black history in order to give parents and home educators a basic foundation for speaking about a particular black history event or um, sometimes even a person like last time I did Pullman Porters in order for you to gain ideas and inspirations in order to build your own lesson and teach those to your children or students or whomever you may be teaching. So we're gonna get started with the Haitian Revolution. Okay, if you have been keeping up with my vlog, um, a few months back, I posted what's called a mini history lesson and I talked about being dispersed in Central America, including the Caribbean. I gave a little quick um, lesson on the dispersion that happened in the islands and in some of the countries in Central America and in the Caribbean. So I want you to check that out. I'm going to put that in the description box because that kind of lays some groundwork before getting into Haiti itself. But I'll go ahead and give a quick review. So I started out with five major nations, right? So the British, the Dutch, the French, the Portuguese, and the Spanish. And I talked about how they were all up and down Central America, South America, and the Caribbean, including um, North America as well, you know, just colonizing all over the place. And so this is why um, lots of the Africans dispersed in these lands speak English or Portuguese or Spanish or French and some even Dutch. So we're going to kind of zoom in a little bit on the island of Haiti. And so this island is colonized by the French and that is where our story is going to take place in history. Okay, so the first thing is you can start this lesson as like far back as the 1600s if you want to or you can kind of scoot up a little bit to the end of the 1700s if you prefer. I will leave that to you as the educator. If you want to begin in the 1600s, you're going to want to do some research about the French pirates who were kind of... Um, coming into the land and taking over, if you will. That's kind of with the beginning of the story. Um, most people, when they talk about the Haitian Revolution, they begin um, like right after the French Revolution. Even though I did see in some history books and me putting this lesson together for my own students, I did see a few mentions like, oh, well, this did start, you know, back in 1670s with French pirates coming into the land, raiding um, someone as far as to say, you know, they kind of gave up their pirating, settled on the land, and then invested in sugar because sugar was a big thing back in that time. And of course, it aided in lots and lots and lots of wealth, right? And so the time span between the French pirates settling down in the island and the French Revolution is about a hundred year gap. So you can kind of see the progression there and, and why there needed to be this fight, you know, a um, hundred years later. So I'll leave that for you to decide if you want to start there or if you want to begin um, at the end of the 1700s. So I'm just going to list off some key facts that you will want to um, include as well as some key terms and um, key people. And then I'm going to conclude with asking uh, a few questions that you'll probably want to throw out there for your students and I will answer some and I will leave some for you to kind of dig for and put together your own lesson. So. First, I'm going to give you key people. So these are some people you definitely want to mention when you discuss the Haitian Revolution. Um, the first, and I hope I'm saying his name right, is Buchman um, Duddy. Uh, I looked around and I couldn't find when he was born. It had the big question mark. Um, but he died in 1791. Okay, and I'll go further into these people a little bit later. The second person you want to know about is Toussaint um, Le Overture. And I'm not French, but I think I'm saying that right in my American accent. Um, the third person is Jean-Jacques Dessalines. The fourth is Napoleon Bonaparte, which Napoleon Bonaparte has like a, a ruler or a commander that he sends into um, 
the colony, uh, I'm sorry, in the island. I believe his name is uh, Le Park. I'm gonna fact check that. I think that I think I remember what it is, but that he's not as important to know, but he does come up and there's a connection to make with him. Um, and then our last key person is Thomas Jefferson. He doesn't really have a big, um, you know, a big relationship with Haiti, just except for the purchase um, that Bonaparte and Jefferson make. And so that's towards the end of uh, this history lesson. So I'll leave that there. Okay, so those are going to be your key people. Um, your key terms are going to be the Louisiana Purchase, 1803, right? Um, and another key term is going to be Oh, you want to discuss the evolution of the name of the island. So as far back as it goes, you have um, St. Domingue. And I hope I'm saying that right too. But um, that is the name of the island originally. And then, of course, Christopher Columbus discovers the island and he names it Hispaniola. And then later, the Haitians end up fighting for their independence and their freedom and they uh, name the island Haiti or some say Haiti, right? So that's like the evolution of the name change and there's so much history that goes along with that. So you can plug history in as you keep up with the name change and depending on what source you're reading, depending on um, how they name the colony, you'll know what time it is as well. All right, so those are our key people and our key terms. The other thing that I wanted to mention are the four classes of people. So anytime I study history and I teach it back to students, I look for a caste system so that they will understand why certain people are being treated a certain way, why certain people have certain roles and positions and leaderships that they may have, etc. So there are four class systems at this time, right about um, the end of the 1700s in Haiti. And of course, it's not even called that yet. Um, you have white plantation owners, right? They're at the top. The second, you have um, like wealthy people of color. Uh, when I looked um, for the terminology, uh, it was obviously it was French, and it I think I'm gonna say this right again. It was Jean de Color, right? People of color. Um, and then uh, third, you had like poor whites. And then fourth, you have the enslaved Africans. Okay, and this is a little interesting because we've been studying Central America and we've been studying the Caribbean all year. And we've had to keep up with the different names that either the enslaved Africans were called or some mixed seed of the oppressing people group and the enslaved people group. They would get together have a baby, it really wasn't a get together, but you guys know, um, have a baby and it would create this new population or this new breed of people. And then they had a particular name and sometimes they had different names, um, just some depending on color sometimes, so depending on who your father was. So that is important to um, point out. But pretty much in all those cases, it was, you know, the enslaved African was at the bottom and then that mixed seed would be next and then it would be um, whites, and then whites would be ranked according to wealth. So I found it interesting that in this island, the people of color, which are mostly, not all of it, but a good bit of them are a mixed seed of your um, rich French plantation owners and your enslaved Africans. I found it interesting that they were above um, poor whites. And that was just a money thing, right? They tended to be wealthier because their fathers being Frenchmen were of a wealthier class. Um, there is a movie called Belle. Belle is a good movie to watch to explain that. It, it does explore that color line and how you are treated better than enslaved Africans but not as well as um, the rich whites. Okay, so I definitely wanted you to have the four classes. Um, okay, so after you um, understand the four classes, I want to go into the revolution and I'm gonna ask you questions along the way for you to answer. I'm gonna give you the question and I want you to find the answer so that you can include the content that comes from that answer in your lesson. And I'll be answering some of them in the video.
Okay, so the first question is, what was the Haitian Revolution? Okay, you should be able to find that just in any textbook that's talking about Haitian history or even just online. But I'll give you the sentence that I have written out. The Haitian Revolution was a political conflict on the island of Hispaniola, which includes Haiti and the Dominican Republic, even though we're zooming in on Haiti in this video. Okay, it was from 1791 to 1804. And basically you had a situation where European powers versus African rebels. Okay, um, and then one note that I added is it was one of the most successful anti-slavery rebellions in world history. Second question, what was um, St. Domingue? That's really important. I already gave you the evolution of the names. So I will leave you to find that history out. But basically you want to understand that it was um, just the richest colony. It was very, very rich. Um, I think it was producing 40% um, of its wealth was coming from sugar and 60% from coffee. I mean, those things are still popular even today and they were very, very popular during this time. And so the colony was just stinking rich. Right, and then you can kind of go into if you want, um, because I teach American children and they understand American slavery. I did a lot of paralleling American slavery to the Haitian slavery so they could understand um, some of the similarities. I, oh, it wasn't like in this way. This was just like this over here and that kind of helped them understand. So we know in American slavery, we have what's called King Cotton. They're very familiar with that. So in the islands, particularly Haiti, I teach them about Queen Sugar. And so they instantly make that connection, right? King Cotton and Queen Sugar. They learn that cotton in one part of the world and sugar in another part of the world are making white people stinking rich. It is the commerce of the world, right? So that is what you want them to understand um, about St. Domingue. Like, what is it? Right, and then I just went into why it would be wealthy. Okay, one of the other reasons it was wealthy is free labor with all of these other European oppressed countries. Um, it is getting rich and it has the wealth that it has because they have people working, enslaved Africans for free. Okay, so the French brought in lots of Africans off of the west coast of Africa into um, the island to work. Um, as a matter of fact, I believe one of the facts that I looked up was that next to Brazil, so Brazil being the most, Haiti had um, the next largest population of enslaved Africans at the time. Okay. Um, oh, I also, I showed them pictures of like the French importation of slaves from Africa into Haiti. You can just Google that. Wiki Commons has a few photos there for them to see, and I also showed them cane fields um, on the island. All right, the next question is, what was the colonial class system like? What was the colonial class system like? I explained the four, four classes already, so you can go more into that if you want in your own lesson. The next one was, how were the African slaves treated on the island? As you can imagine, horrible. You can, here's another um, example of being able to parallel American slavery to the Haitian slavery because if they're already familiar with American slavery, they'll be able to make certain connections quite easily and quite well. So obviously there's long work hours, there are um, bad conditions, disease, malnutrition, etc. You can also show them pictures of the Africans working in the cane fields. Wiki Commons has some pictures of that as well that'll help you. I also showed them pictures of um, sugar production as well as um, certain imagery of um, like slave punishment. I didn't get too graphic, you know, just something that they would typically expect when they hear slavery. All right, your next question is, how does the revolution start? How does the revolution start? So I will give you um, part of that answer and then I'll leave you to explore. The trouble starts in 1789 with the French Revolution. So if you're not already aware, 1789 is the year that the French Revolution begins. And basically it's a declaration of the rights of man. 
And then that can go into lots of different ways depending on where you want to take your lesson. So definitely look up Declaration of the Rights of Man and just kind of follow the history trail and see where you want to take that. Um, oh, yes, you also had um, that wealthy class of coloreds. You also have them wanting freedom as well. They were free like they weren't enslaved, but they were still under the thumb of the rich um, white plantation owners and they wanted to be from underneath that. Okay, moving right along. The next question is, how does the revolution start on the island? Okay, so this is where um, Bookman Duddy, I believe I'm saying his name right, comes into play. So he's a voodoo priest. Um, and this is very important too. You um, may want to go into what that means. I won't go into all of that in this video, but voodoo is a mixture of African spirituality and the religion that the enslaved Africans were exposed to by being under French oppression. So the main religion there would be Roman Catholicism. And so like good old Africans do, no matter where they're dispersed at, they tend to mix um, their indigenous beliefs or spiritual practices with that of their oppressor and then it creates a new um, belief system or faith or religion if you will and so voodoo in the on the haitian um, island was a mix between the african spirituality and Roman catholicism so he was a voodoo priest who sparked a slave uprising of course that terrified whites he um, burnt plantations and he freed certain slaves so here we have, you know, a um, person of the African persuasion in Haiti who's done, ready to be from underneath European power. Okay, so now the colonies, white colonists, they make a deal with the British for help. So this is why understanding those five major nations help. Because at this point, we have the British, the Spanish, and the French. You know, they're all fighting each other, but um, now they have a special interest in Haiti. Okay, so I showed them some pictures of Duddy. Um, I showed them some pictures of his uprising. Okay, and then I also showed pictures of like the destruction of some French plantations in him, you know, burning up the land. Okay, so now we want to move on to who is Toussaint. All right, so Toussaint kind of hmm, picks up where Duddy leaves off, if you will. So you can easily Google Toussaint and find a lot of history. So I'm not going to go too far. But basically, he's known um, as, you know, a successful rebel, right? And he is one of the most successful of the African um, rebellions or revolutionaries, if you will. Okay, he lived from 1743 to 1803, and he was brilliant. He was a brilliant businessman. He was a brilliant general. He had lots of ideas and plans and strategies that worked um, very well until it came a point where someone got upset. Um, so we'll go into that in a little bit. Um, he was believed to be a black messiah and we talked a little bit about what Black Messiah meant in terms of like the history of Black people from ancient times all the way till today. And so my students were able to follow basically that anybody who instills a hope and also offers them freedom from oppression in some type of way, right? And so as long as that is present, you will have a population of Blacks, or Africans, however you want to phrase that, who would um, definitely name that person as the Messiah of their time, right? And there's been several black messiahs throughout the history of Africans. Okay, so we talked about that concept. And you can take that as early as you would like, like all the way back to the Bible. You can take it as early as you like, like ancient um Africa or even like medieval times during Africa, we see some of that as well, all the way till today. It, you could definitely do that. We definitely have Black Messiahs are mentioned with Dr. King, sometimes with Malcolm X, depending on philosophy. We have Black Messiahs in um, 
Garvey or in um, Selassie, so many, right? Okay, so I also showed them imagery of Toussaint's troops in battle. And then we moved on to the issues that he faced, right? So you'll find lots of issues when you, you do some research on this. So you have to narrow in to what it is that you want to focus on. I'll give you some obvious ones though. So you definitely have that wealthy <laughs> black class, that wealthy, you know, colors that we talked about who were second in the class system there in, um, in Haiti. If you recall the second class in the class system that I gave you earlier in the video, you, he, um, Toussaint is definitely having some issues with that class of people. They definitely want the French to remain in charge. They like it that way. So they are opposed to a black republic. And so he does find himself in some heat and in some trouble with that. Okay, and then also, one of the things that Toussaint is able to do is he's able to gain help from the U.S. in order to um, kind of add some leverage and it even come out with an advantage in the fighting or the European powers who are fighting um, over the colony, right? Which is really, really strange. <laughs> you can definitely have a conversation with your students about that. The U.S., then found its way into helping Toussaint, um, you know, kind of overthrow or fight against European power while they have slaves as well in their country. And it's a very, you know, backbreaking work. And then it's, it's pretty similar to what we see in Haiti. It's vile, it's inhumane, it's horrible. So you can definitely have a conversation there. Like, what does that say about the U.S.? Why would they make this move here? And so, obviously, you want to ask, be able to teach them the answer to that question and have them kind of discuss that and pull that out. Why would they do that? Because it sounds like they would have an interest for a reason other than just out of the goodness of their heart. I'll allow you to explore that. Okay, the next question is, what issues did Toussaint face as a new leader? Okay, so the first is obvious. There are economic issues because they've burned all of the plantations. Okay, maybe all is a stretch, but they've burned a lot of the plantations and this is where the wealth was coming from. So this is another conversation that you can have with students and kind of throw this discussion question out. You know, you just can't um, end something. Like if there's a process to closing out something. So if this colony, I'm sorry, if this island has its wealth in these goods that they're able to export out, you just can't burn up a field. You just can't get rid of the labor force in the way in which you want to get rid of it. So um, that is a really good discussion question for students. How do you end slavery? And even though you know that it's not, you know, a... Uh, fair labor practice, how do you start to knock down the force that it's been? Because you just can't overnight go, no more um, plantations. Because, I mean, wow, what a way to bankrupt your nation. And so that's what he was facing. Um, of course, there are ways, and you can have them brainstorm, what are some things they could do to keep sugar and coffee as a crop that they can export but get rid of the labor that allows your children to be sold and get rid of a practice that allows you to not be paid for your work. So I will allow you to go wherever you want to go with that. All right, another issue that he faced as a leader was he ended up forcing uh, Africans back into forced labor because in his mind, that's the only way that he thought that they would not be bankrupt or be poor. Okay, so some questions. Is this now a dictatorship? Because he was supposed to be fighting for a republic. What happens? Is this slavery all over again? Those are some questions that you can pose to your students. Okay, the next one is, is everybody happy with Toussaint as a new leader? Obviously with the issues that I just posed, they're not. And so depending on how you wanna teach your lesson, 
you can pick one of those issues or a few of those issues and decide who would be upset and who would be pleased with um, the ideas that Tucson had and discuss why and who those people would be. Um, okay, so now this is where uh, Bonaparte is going to come into because he is, well, there's a, there's a problem. And the problem is, even though Toussaint has raised himself up as this leader, technically speaking, the island still belongs to the French. And Bonaparte has power. And his idea is, we're going to institute slavery all over again. He needs cash. And Haiti is rich. I mean, that's what he knows the island to be to be very wealthy because of the, the plantations that are there. And so he's like, listen, we need to reinstitute slavery and get this money, basically, was his mindset. So, of course, he comes on the island. He, um, he captures Toussaint, puts him in a French prison, and Toussaint dies there. So, now who rises up in... Um, who rises up after Toussaint? This is where Jean-Jacques Dessalines comes in. He definitely follows in Toussaint's stead. Okay, your next question is, what eventually ends French rule in Haiti for good? Okay, so Bonaparte comes into the island trying to reinstitute slavery and basically take it back to the good old days so that he can acquire the wealth that he wants to acquire and disease. Um, disease plagues so many of the French soldiers, it wipes them out. Okay, and there is, there is another trend throughout um, the history of the African people, even in the States, that some somehow a natural disaster comes and it aids in helping release or free um, African people. It's just what happens, and so it, it is here as well. So you can discuss um, some of the tropical diseases that occurred on um, the island, yellow fever being one. Okay, so because of that, Napoleon um, recalls his troops, and Haiti declares its independence. Yay, Haiti. So in 1884, it's when that happened. So I want to um, plug in a movie here. It's called Haitian Revolution 1804. You'll want to watch that before you teach your Haitian Revolution um, lesson. And it may even be something you have your students to watch if they um, are old enough. Okay, the next question is, how is the Haitian Revolution viewed by the rest of the world? The world doesn't find out about the Haitian Revolution until much later. So I just mentioned that in 1884, Haiti, you know, gained its independence, but it doesn't become announced to the world until like 1862. And obviously you can imagine reasons for that. One, fear. Fear of slave revolts happening anywhere else um, where Europeans have power and they have Africans enslaved, um, mainly the U.S., right? Okay, and then also this helped to push the Louisiana Purchase. So Bonaparte um, needs money. And so he ends up selling what land he does have, what we would know as the Louisiana Purchase. He ends up selling that land to Thomas Jefferson. And that is how Haiti gives the U.S. all that land in a, in, in a way. Okay, so I also wanted to mention before um, I close out, Professor Baina Bello, she is a lecturer, uh, probably among other titles that she holds. Um, she's on YouTube. I'll link one of her videos in the description box and I'll let you, you know, do the YouTube trail from there. She is a great um, professor, historian, etc. to listen to about Haiti. She's from there and she is a wealth of knowledge when it comes to this island and its history. Okay, I hope the information that I shared was helpful for you in laying a foundation or laying some groundwork to help you begin to put together a lesson and give you some key points and key ideas on where to begin in order to teach on the Haitian Revolution if you would like to do that. If you like this video, please like, please share, please subscribe. Until next time.